Hey, what's up everybody? This is Muth24, and today I'm taking a look at the Serial Experiments Lane box set. This is the old uh, Jinan release. This is not the new Funimation one. I actually was looking for that one originally, um, and I happened to come across this at ShudoCon, which was in Lansing uh, this March, and it was a used copy, but it was in really good condition, and they had marked down the price a little bit, so I figured why not go ahead and try and get this one. Uh, since it was there, it was affordable. And uh, this is one of my favorite... Uh, anime from the like mid to late 90s when they were doing you know some really weird some highly experimental stuff not only with the animation style but with the subject matter they're tackling um this is i think to its non-robot non-space science fiction genre what evangelion was to the mecha genre um it, it really pushes the envelope with the stuff it's covering, and it's, it's a really thought-provoking series. It is also the single trippiest, weirdest series I've ever seen. Um, it, there were parts in Ava, uh, specifically the later episodes and End of Evangelion, where you weren't really sure the first time watching it what was real and what was inside Shinji's mind or what was being thought of by someone else. Um, this series, it's right off the bat. You, you have no idea what's going on half the time. Um, I love it because of that, but it also drives me bonkers sometimes because it's, it's really hard for me to watch more than a few episodes at a time because there's just so much going on and it's sort of an overload. Um, but it's, I think in a good way because it's, it's a series that doesn't shy away from throwing a bunch of stuff your way and having you sort through it. So the main character here is Lane and she is a pretty typical um, high school age, uh, kid, and she's kind of, the thing about her appearance is that she appears a bit younger than her friends, um, and it's kind of done deliberately that she looks a little bit neutral, like, you're not really sure at first whether she's, like, middle school or high school, um, and her friends seem a little bit older, a little bit more, um, mature, maybe outgoing, and as we find out, Lane's having these weird scenarios where she believes that there may be someone else out there who looks or behaves like her. Because people keep saying, like, oh, we saw someone just like you at, at this club, um, you know, last night where she has no recollection of even being there. Um, and then there's this whole idea of uh, this computer internet thing called the Wired. It's basically the internet. It's just this world's version of it. Um, their computers operate a little bit differently, and they're called navvies. But um, this whole idea of creating an alter ego inside the uh, the Wired, and how does that interact with other people in the Wired versus how you interact with people in the real world. And it, it's, it's very much an existentialist piece. Um, th that's really what it is pushing more than anything else, is this whole idea of, uh, you know, what does it mean to be a person? What is the implication of creating an alternate identity in this technological realm, um, and what are the implications between the two? You know, like, how does my real self interact with my internet self? How does the internet self reflect back on the, the like, the real human self? Um, it, it's a very deep, very dense series, but there's a lot to sit through, and it's, it's a really rewarding experience if you give it um, a shot. So on the front here we have Lane with the moon, the phone wires, a fence there. All the promotional art for this is really cool, I think. Um, they don't have a whole lot of this, like, on the... Uh, like, this style isn't exactly how the series looks. Um, the series does look phenomenal. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but there's the side, and then there's the back. Now, the biggest difference between this version and the more recently released Funimation box set is that this is just the DVD set. Uh, you have four DVD cases in this one box. The Funimation version is the DVD Blu-ray combo, and it is a special edition that comes with it, like an art book and sort of a um, bit of information inside that book on characters and locations and tech and stuff inside the series. Um, had I been able to track that one down at the time, I probably would have gotten it over this one, um, but, you know, being that the price was right for this, I'm fine with this uh, box set because it is a pretty high quality uh, DVD release for being an older uh, anime DVD release. Uh, I want to say this came out around 2003, 2004, something like that. Um, don't quote me on that, I'm not positive. But it it was relatively early um, when compared to some of the more, you know, recent stuff that they have. Uh, and also one of the earlier DVD box sets that they had out there. Uh, I know they did these all individually first and then did the full box set. The dub that you get 
with this one and the Funimation version is exactly the same. Uh, just the biggest difference with the Funimation one is what you get in the package and the Blu-ray version, obviously. So here's the cover art for the four individual DVDs. Um, here we have the first volume, which is the same as the front and back of the case cover art, and this includes the first four episodes. Um, you also have uh, subtitles, both English and Japanese, um, and then there's the scene access, and there's just as extra stuff on there. And I honestly don't remember what all extras are on this uh, box set. Uh, it may just be sort of a Bandai DVD thing, uh, you know, with some of their older stuff where they just put previews on there. Um, I can't imagine there's a whole lot. I, I don't remember seeing that much on the menus, to be honest. So I, I don't think there's a whole lot there in terms of special features. Not, I wouldn't think there's um, like making of stuff. But anyways, uh, here's the front of the box art for volume two, and then the back, three more episodes. Volume 3, three more episodes, and then Volume 4 with the final three episodes. So this series really isn't terribly long, um, but like I said, it is very heavy, just in terms of the subject matter, uh, the character development, the plot development, and just the whole suspense theme going on throughout it. Um, I'm just a huge fan of, like, early modern science fiction uh speculative fiction, that sort of genre in both literature and film and television series. Um, it, f for me, it's just kind of like the stuff that I get really into, um, and a lot of people that I know are like, oh, you read Bradbury and Asimov and, and stuff for fun? Yes, I do. Um, that's just <laughs> kind of what I geek out over. Um, and this is very much in that vein. It's sort of the idea of, you know, where does man and machine... Um, meet and where do the lines between them blur. Uh, but it's a very different take on that than, than what you might expect. Um, as I mentioned before, the animation is really well done. It's from the same um, animation team that did the original Digimon, I believe, or at least some of the same team members. And so you have this really early uh, foray into the digital animation, where some of it's still hand-drawn, and some of it's digitally animated and digitally colored, and it's got this really cool blend of the two. Um, there's a few other series that I have that are a lot like that, um, and stuff that I've seen that does that really well. Um, there's not that much in terms of, like, 3D models and stuff, so you won't have this weird age-looking thing where you will with, uh, you know, the likes of Blue Submarine Number 6, which, don't get me wrong, looked really cool in the day, um, but Blue Sub Number 6 hasn't aged all that well, I don't think, in terms of its animation, at least. Uh, but this, it, it's very well done. There's there's some 3D models here and there when they go inside the wire, but it doesn't stand out that much um, against, a, like, a 2D background. Um, the soundtrack is great as well. It's really, like, grungy and industrial, and there's some, like, gritty electronica stuff in there. Uh, it's really cool. And uh, I just, honestly, if you like anime that makes you think, um, if you like anime that falls in that sort of weird experimental subgenre that came out in like the mid to late 90s, um, or if you just want something that's different, give this a try. I, I really highly recommend it. I know it's not for everyone, um, in the same way that Evangelion isn't for everyone, but I, I this is one of like the most original animes that I've ever watched, and uh, one of the most memorable, for sure. Um, it's it's just there's it leaves you with such an impact and such a rewarding uh, feeling after you've finished it, uh, even though it's not necessarily like the most positive vibe sort of a series throughout. Um, that you, when you get done with it, you will feel like wow, I actually got something out of that, um, which I really appreciate when I watch pretty much anything or read anything. Um, but yeah, for for me, this is one of the most uh, interesting watches I've had in a long time with an anime or any TV series for that matter. So that pretty much wraps up this review, and with that I will see you guys next time.